In this part six of transportation problem, we are going to discuss Vogel's approximation method for setting initial feasible solution. Vogel's approximation method is an improved version of least cost cell method that generally, but not always, produce better initial feasible solution to transportation problem. It is an iterative procedure such that in each step, we should find the penalties for each available row and column by taking the least cost and second least cost. Penalties meaning the absolute value of the difference between the least cost and the second least cost of the given row or column. What makes this method different from least cost sale method is that it starts by calculating the penalty of each row and each column as the difference between the least cost and the second least cost. The following are the steps for setting initial feasible solution by using Vogel's approximation method. Step 1. Identify the two least costs in each row and column of a given cost matrix and then calculate the absolute row and column difference. When we say absolute row and column difference, we mean that we have to consider only the positive value or the absolute values of the difference between the least cost and the second least cost in a given row or column. Step 2. Identify row or column with the maximum penalty and allocate as much as possible to the variable with the least unit cost in the selected row or column to the amount equal to the corresponding sales supply or demand, whichever is the minimum. If two or more rows or columns have the same maximum penalty, then we can choose the one that can receive more assignments. This step and the steps ahead are almost similar to the steps we follow in the least cost sale method. Step 3. Reduce row supply and column and demand by the amount allocated to the select least cost cell. After such reduction, if all the supply is consumed, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. The other requirement, if all the demand is fulfilled, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. Step four, stop the procedure if the supply at each origin is zero, that's every supply is exhausted, and demand at each destination is zero, that's every demand is satisfied. If not, repeat the procedure from step one. For better understanding of this method, let's set initial feasible solution for transportation problem. This is a problem. Determine the initial feasible solution for the undermentioned transportation W by using Vogel's approximation method and calculate the resulted cost. Unit cost is given in birth. For this same problem, we set initial feasible solution by using least cost cell method and northwest corner cell methods in two separate videos. The intent for using the same problem in these three different methods is to compare the quality of the initial feasible solution obtained by using these methods. Now, let's set initial feasible solution by following the steps of Vogel's approximation method. Step 1. Identify the two least costs in each row and column of the given cost matrix, and then calculate the absolute row and column difference, meaning calculate the row penalty and column penalty as the difference between the two least costs of each row and each column. So let's portray the row penalty at this right-hand margin and the column penalty at this bottom margin of the tablet. The least cost in row 1 is 2, and the second least cost is 3, thus 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. The least cost in row 2 is similarly 2, and the second least cost is also 3, so their difference is 1 again. In row 3, the least cost and the second least cost are equal, that's 4, so 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. In the ultimate row, the two least costs are 2 and 3, hence the difference between them is 1. Next. Let's calculate the column penalty. The least cost in column 1 is 2, and the second least cost is 3, so subtracting 2 from 3 gives 1. In column 2, the least cost is 2, and the second least cost is 5, so 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. In the third column, the least cost and the second least cost are 2 and 4, means 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. The least cost in column 4 is 3, and the second least cost is 4. So the difference between them is 1. In the fifth column, the two least costs are 3 and 5. So the difference between them is 2. Now we calculate all the row and column penalties. So let's move to step 2. Identify the row and column with maximum penalty 
and allocate as much as possible to the variable with least unit cost in the selected row or column to the amount equal to the corresponding sales supply or demand, whichever is the minimum. If two or more columns or rows have the same maximum penalty, then we can choose the one that can receive more assignments. Among all the calculated penalties, three, that is the penalty of column two, is the maximum penalty. Hence, column two has to be chosen to receive the first allocation. In this column, two is the least cost. Demand corresponding to this selected least cost is 4,000, and supply corresponding to it is 4,500. The smaller one from these two, that's 4,000, has to be allocated to the selected least cost set. Step three, reduce row supply and column and demand by the amount allocated to the selected least cost set. Reducing the allocated 4,000 from the corresponding supply and demand decreases the demand from 4,000 to zero and supply from 4,500 to 500. The rule after this reduction is that if all the supply is consumed, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding row from further consideration by drawing a line through it. Row one shouldn't be eliminated because supply is not reduced to zero, rather 500 units is left unconsumed. The other rule is that if all the demand is fulfilled, reduce it to zero and eliminate the corresponding column from further consideration by drawing a line through it. Column two has to be eliminated by drawing a line through it because destination to demand is reduced to zero. Step four, stop the procedure if supply at each origin is zero, that's every supply is exhausted, and demand at each destination is zero, that's every demand is satisfied. If not, repeat the procedure from step one. Only column two demand is satisfied, but the rest four column and demands left unsatisfied, and all the four origin supplies left unconsumed, Hence, we have to continue our allocation by following the steps. So let's calculate the row penalties. Among the undeleted sales in row one, the least cost is three, and the next least cost is five, since five minus three is equal to two. In second row, the two least costs are two and three, since their difference is one. The least cost in row three is four, and the second least cost is also four. So four minus four is equal to zero. The first and the second least costs in row 4 are 2 and 3, so 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. All row penalties are determined, so let's move on to calculate column and penalties. First column and penalty, or the difference between the two least costs of column and 1, is 1. The least cost in column and 3 is 2, and the second least cost is 4, means 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. In column and 4, the difference between the first least cost, that is 3, and the second least cost, that is 4, is 1. The two least consecutive costs in the ultimate column are 3 and 5, so subtracting 3 from 5 yields 2. At this stage, all column and row penalties are calculated, and the maximum penalty is 2. Column 3, column 5, and row 1 are on tie with a maximum penalty of 2. Thus, we have to compare the amount that can be allocated to the least cost sales in these columns and rows with maximum penalty. The least cost in row 1 is 3. Supply corresponding to this sale is 500, and demand corresponding to it is 3,000. The amount that can be allocated to this sale is 500. The least unit cost in column 3 is 2. The smaller one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this least cost sale is 3,000. The other column with maximum penalty is the fifth column with the least unit cost of three. Demand and supply corresponding to this sale are equal, that is 3,000. So the amount that can be allocated to this sale is 3,000. 3,000 is greater than 500. So 3,000 is the amount that should be allocated to the selected least cost sale. Still two sales, that's the least cost of column 3 and the least cost of column 5 are on time to receive this greater amount, that's 3,000. In such case, we can choose any one of them, but it is still advisable to choose the least unit cost set, meaning the sale with unit cost of 2 is preferable in this particular case, and the amount that can be allocated to this sale is 3,000. Deducting the allocated 3,000 from the corresponding demand and supply reduces the demand from 4,000 to 1,000 and the supply from 3,000 to 0. 
Rho 2 has to be crossed out because origin to supply is reduced to zero. In continuance, we have to calculate the row and column penalty of each of the unlined rows and columns. Penalty of row 1 is 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. And that of row 3 is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. And row 4 is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. When we come to column penalties, penalty of column 1 is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Column 3 is 6 minus 4, which is equal to 2. Column 4 is 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. And that of column 5 is 6 minus 5, which is equal to 1 again. The maximum penalty is 2. Row 1 and column 3 are on tie with this maximum penalty. The least active unit cost in row 1 is 3. Supply corresponding to this sale is 500. And demand corresponding to it is 3,000. Since the amount that can be allocated to this sale is 500. The least unlined unit cost in column 3 is 4. The less one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this sale is 1,000. 1,000 is greater than 500. The column 3 is the next column that is chosen to receive the allocation. And 4 is the least unit cost to receive the allocation of 1,000 units. Subtracting the allocated 1,000 from the corresponding demand and supply decreases the demand to 0 and supply to 5,000. We have to delete column 3 because destination 3 demand is fulfilled. In calculating the penalties of the 3 undeleted rows, penalty of row 1 is 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. Penalty of row 3 is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0. And penalty of row 4 is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. In moving to column and penalties, penalty of column 1 is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Penalty of column 4 is 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. And penalty of column 5 is 6 minus 5, which is equal to 1. The maximum penalty is 2, since row 1 is the one to receive the next assignment. The least unit cost in this row is 3. The smaller one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this least cost set is 500. Deducting the allocated 500 from the corresponding supply and demand, reduce supply from 500 to 0, and the demand from 3,000 to 2,500. Row 1 has to be deleted because origin 1 supply is reduced to 0. At this stage, only two rows left uncrossed out. The penalty of row 3 is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0, and that of row 4 is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. And also, three columns are left unlined for each with two undeleted unit costs. So the column penalty is simply the difference between the unlined unit cost of each column, since penalty of column 1 is 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. Penalty of column 4 is 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. And that of column 5 is 7 minus 5, which is equal to 2. The maximum penalty is 2. Column 1 and column 5 are on time with this maximum penalty. So let's compare the amount that can be received by the least costs of these columns. The smaller undeleted cost in column 1 is 2. The less one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this sale is 2,500. From the two active unit costs of column 5, the smaller one is 5. The less one from the corresponding demand and supply that can be allocated to this sale is 3,000. 3,000 is greater than 2,500. So column 5 is the next column to receive the assignment. The smaller undeleted unit cost in this column is 5, and the amount that can be allocated to this cell is 3,000. Subtracting the allocated 3,000 from the corresponding demand reduces the demand to 0, and also subtracting the allocated 3,000 from the unconsumed 5,000 unit supply reduces the supply to 2,000. We have to cross out column 5 because destination 5 demand is fulfilled. At this point, Row and column penalties are simply the difference between unit costs of the two active columns and the two active rows respectively. Hence, row 3 penalty is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0, and row 4 penalty is 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. Column 1 penalty is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2, and column 4 penalty is equal to 4 minus 3, which is equal to 1. 2 is the maximum penalty, and his Column 1 is the next column to receive allocations. The smaller unit cost in column 1 is 2. Demand corresponding to this cell is 2,500, and supply corresponding to it is 2,000. 
The smaller one from this supply and demand that has to be allocated to this cell is 2000. Deducting the allocated 2000 reduces origin for supply to zero and destination one demand to 500. We have to delete row four because origin for supply is reduced to zero. Now we left with only one undeleted row. There's no need to calculate row and column penalties, meaning we can skip step one and directly proceed to step two. The two undeleted costs in row three are equal, that's four. So let's choose the one that can receive the greater amount, that is the four in column four. Demand and supply corresponding to this sale are 3,500 and 4,000 respectively. Thus, the smaller one from these two that can be allocated to this sale is 3,500. Subtracting 3,500 reduce the corresponding demand to zero and the corresponding supply to 500. We have to eliminate column four by drawing a line through it because destination for demand is reduced to zero. The only active cell we left with is the one as the intersection of row three and column one. Unfulfilled demand corresponding to this cell is equal to unconsumed supply corresponding to this cell, which is equal to 500. So 500 has to be allocated to this cell. The allocation of 500 to this cell reduces both demand and supply to zero. At this stage, all the four origins supply and the five destinations demand are reduced to zero. So this is the initial feasible solution we were seeking. Resulted total cost is equal to occupied cell in column one, that's 500 times three, plus the second occupied cell in column one, that's 500 times four, plus the third occupied cell in column one, 2000 times two, plus occupied cell in column two, 4000 times two, plus occupied cell in column three, that's 3000 times two, plus the second occupied cell in column three, that's 1000 times four, plus occupied cell in column four, that's 3,500 times four, plus occupied cell in column five, that's 3,000 times five. 500 times three is 1,500, plus 500 times four is 2,000, plus 2,000 times two is 4,000, plus 4,000 times two is 8,000, plus 3,000 times two is 6,000, plus 1,000 times four is 4,000, plus 3,500 times 4 is 14,000 plus 3,000 times 5 is 15,000. The sum of these numbers gives 54,500. The initial feasible solution of this same problem was set by using this cost cell method and Northwest corner cell methods. And the result total costs obtained are 57,500 and 72,500 respectively. The least total transportation cost of 54,500 obtained by using Vogel's approximation method proves the generalization we made at the beginning of this video. That is, Vogel's approximation method is an improved version of this cost method that generally, but not always, produces better initial feasible solution to transportation problems. By this, I conclude this episode. Goodbye.